We got people in here who just are not okay with the ministry. You struggle with it. You struggle with all kinds of issues. The major issue that most people struggle with is the way Heather Beach looks. That's the number one complaint that I get. Her breasts are too big and she looks too much like a stripper. That's what I hear. Because we can't get over it. God can't use an ex stripper. God can't use a person with large breasts. He can't do that. God can use any individual to change the world. Any any individual as long as that individual comes in the name of love and you need to understand how serious I am right now this is not a joke I'm trusting the future of our church in the hands of an ex stripper soft porn star you want me to talk about how my life sucks now <laughs> how if I was to give advice to people starting a ministry where all of a sudden you become famous and everybody around you hates you, it sucks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, talk about that. <laughs> I don't want to talk. It does suck, man. This is my neighborhood that I grew up in, Muskoi, and um, pretty much rundown area. I was born to a 17-year-old mother, and my dad was this wild hippie guy who eventually turned into a hardcore punker. Everything was just out of control all the time in my home. With um, heavy, heavy drug use going on around me. By eighth grade, I had a whole group of friends that were all bad kids. I was raped at 14, a single mother by 18. And when I was 20, I tried to get married and um, my husband ended up to be a complete loser. I got on a plane, went to San Francisco. I had nothing but two paychecks and one outfit. And I went into a nightclub and got a job as a go-go dancer. Once I got to San Francisco, I really started letting loose. I was drinking every night like crazy, and um, then eventually I was so in over my head dating like arms dealers and all this stuff that I wanted to come back home. So I came back down to Southern California, got a job as a bikini dancer. The bikini bar I was working at went pasty, then the pasty bar went topless, ended up getting a boob job, and went out and started stripping in Las Vegas. I was partying, I was indulging in any sexual experience I could. I made fetish films. They are called trampoline films where I would walk on guys with high heels. I got into um, having slaves because I thought that was funny. I would tie them up, make them drink out of dog bowls. I pretty much had sex with everything but children and animals.
going on? Am I filming? Are you, you here or are you not here? Hey. Hey, what's up? There's my wife. There's my wife. How are you doing, honey? Bye, Mom. Let me look at your face. Oh. All right, I'll make a nice dinner for you guys. Thank you. She was working at a um a club uh, in the area, and I used to go over there. I was really popular with a lot of the girls because I used to do their hair, you know, the doing hair extensions and things like that. And then I started doing her hair a little bit, and we became friends. We just started hanging out and stuff like this. She and I were on the edge of prop humor gone bad. One time we went to a senior, senior's luncheon place. She dressed up as a sexy Bo Peep, and then I had a, I dressed up as a Catholic guard from the mid-century. And so we'd always do these crazy things, kind of fell in love with each other. A lot of people wonder how, uh, how I ended up going from being a stripper to a church lady. How the whole thing went down is, in 1999, there was all this millennium talk. Oh no, it's happening. Well, it actually got me scared thinking about death and, and if I was going to pay a price for the way I lived. So I ended up um, first putting myself through beauty school. Then I ended up asking John to marry me. And then shortly after our wedding, I asked John to go to church. It was pretty intense. For me to walk myself into church knowing who I was and that I was turning my back on that, I had tears streaming down my face when my feet hit that carpet. I knew that I was going to be with God and I told God that I will never ever turn my back on Him. back from vacation. How many of you guys feel like when you come back from a vacation, you need a vacation from your vacation? Anybody ever feel that way? Oh, man. I think I was targeted from day one. I think I was on her radar, and what she was going to do is get to know me no matter what it took. She said, hey, I'll cut your hair for free. I'll color your hair for free. Well, I'm a pastor. I don't have a lot of money. That's easy. So I start going. I start to get to know her. She starts cutting my hair. She talks the whole time. And, you know, she starts sharing with me crazy stuff. This is really bad. I probably shouldn't say this, but... She's telling me, yeah, I used to be a sex addict. Well, that's weird. I used to be a stripper. I used to do soft porn. You know, and my mind's running a million different directions thinking, okay, Lord, am I supposed to run out of here? What am I supposed to do? I never felt like she was coming on to me. Ah, take that. But you know who I was intimidated with at first? My wife. How are you? Heather used to be bisexual, and my wife's a good-looking woman. I'm telling you, I was a little intimidated. I was like, geez. You know, it's funny because the church didn't um, not welcome me, but they didn't welcome me either. When people find out about my story, I'd be telling them, you know, this is my past. I would see their faces change. I started hearing rumors that, you know, women were um, afraid to go shopping with me because they might have to change around me, and I would be attracted to them. Um, people were constantly saying bad things behind my back because I was an ex-stripper. But um, then I met Lori. Okay, we can't have a Sandals Church married couples get away without talking about sex. I, I just had it in my, in my head that I wanted to do something special for my husband for Christmas. And, um, you know, there's only so many things you can give a guy. And so I wanted to do something that he would think was really unique and surprise him. And so I decided I wanted to do a special dance for him, a little private dance. And I had known that Heather was an ex-stripper. And so I asked my, my pastor's wife if she thought Heather would be offended if I asked her to help me learn how to dance like a stripper. 
So I went up to her after church one Sunday and, and asked her, and she was like, oh yeah, I'll totally help you do that. So um, yeah, so we got together a few times and came up with a little routine, and it went off really well. Yes. That why you did this, why you felt this was important. Are you trying to be holy, but you keep being horny? Yes. <laughs> I, I don't want to leave. I don't want to leave. Bye. <laughs> well, Lori's Christmas present goes over very well with her husband. When some of the other ladies found out that it's okay to dance for your husband as long as you're married, even the pastor's wife signed up for a little pole dancing lesson. Um, I tried to call you. Did you get my message on Wednesday night? I left it on your cell phone. If I gotta wear a Jesus shirt, you're all the time. Bill I have a lot of not Bill. Okay, I have a lot of nice shirts. Okay, you're but I walk Bill around because I'm, I'm an evangelist. You have a problem with it? Stop. Well, I'm just saying. I'm, I'm, I knew we were never gonna be the perfect normal family because, for one, we we're always gonna have a past, and another is John lost part of his brain to cancer surgery. You know, it's trippy. I can um. I can I can whistle any tune or anything that I can remember, but I can't sing to my favorite songs. And so, about five years ago, when I did this, when I did one of the other brain song, and I couldn't remember um, some of my favorite songs, like from Kiss. Yeah. And um, and I my brother hates Kiss, and uh, I said, Dave, I can't remember the words to kiss songs and he goes there is a god <laughs> that's my one of my I was ready to live a normal life try to be like everybody else but then I heard that a dancer friend of mine died of alcoholism. Her name was Janine, and she died dating an 80-year-old man and living in his house. When I found that out, it made me so sad that I had been living so disconnected and living in this Christian bubble. I had my Christian friends, I had my church, Everybody loved me, but in the meantime, I left a bunch of friends behind, and now they're dying. So on my way home, I was struck by this idea. If I could start a ministry at Sandals Church that reached out to these girls, maybe I can save some lives. The one thing she's always wanted to do changes every week. <laughs> when I first met her, the, the only thing she ever wanted to be was a housewife. Get it going, like ASAP. So that Next thing I know, she's say, networking all hey. the women in the church. No announcement from the pulpit or anything, and she's just meeting girls, talking to girls, getting girls on board. When I was talking to Heather, she told me that she just felt that there was no hope for girls who were in the industry and that because she was in the industry, she wanted to reach out to those women and let them know that there's a God and there's hope out there for them. That's why if we could get a team of girls and we all say, let's get down and brainstorm. I may have originally thought that Heather was out there, but once I really started listening to her and hearing where she was coming from and hearing her passion, I realized she's not crazy. She's right on. 
I don't even know where to begin. Originally, we came up with the name Matthew's House because Jesus Christ went to Matthew's house where he hung out with tax collectors and prostitutes. But as time went on, I figured out Matthew's House makes no sense to people in the sex industry. So I came up with the name they could relate to. JC's Girls, Girls, Girls. of you son that you're working with them I said mom it's been a lifelong dream for me to minister to strippers <laughs> and she started laughing she said oh, that's my boy